Hi, this is Marina from Frogs and Frolics, and I'm going to show you how to work a pattern from a pattern magazine. And this time it's going to be Ottobra, and we're making this beautiful jacket in here. We're going to sew a jacket, a pea coat from Ottobra. Excited? Right, let's have a look at this. Um, I'm going to do step by step and we're going to have a new sew along every four weeks where we're going to take it a step further because it's quite work intense this thing so I'm not going to do this all in one video that will be way too long. The first thing you have to do when you work with a pattern magazine or any other pattern is that you have to decide on the actual size so you got to go page 25 and you find out what size you need. You should have quite a lot of ease in a coat and I, I think 8 to 10 centimeters is probably okay. That's what, 4 inches. So it can be quite a loose coat for you, okay? So you have a go and see what the height is. It's in here in centimeters. So in my case, I'm actually going to make it for a girl because I don't have a boy model and I'm going to go do the size 146 so that it fits her next winter and also in the winter after that, I think that will last her a long time. Now with October patterns, you will find that the seam allowance is not included, that you have to add that. Of course, you don't have to add it where you have a fold. We'll come to that in a minute but you have to add the seam allowance to every other um, edge of your pattern so that in the end they look like this. I'm gonna do that together. So fear not, step by step to success with Frogs and Frolics and October this time. And then you have got some instructions and you just go straight to this. I have to say that when I look at this for the first time or I looked at this for the first time, I went, Oh my god all these instructions you know um, they are a bit different to what I would normally do for a beginner but then again I think if we do it really slowly this is totally doable and once you've done it once you probably get really hooked they are quite good these patterns and um, you can make adjustments to them for fit as well so you don't have to necessarily stick with it like I'm going to do it for a girl so I probably will bring the shoulder in a little bit on the pattern but that is not for today for today we're just going to get the pattern ready so you have got a giant sheet in fact in your pattern magazine book you have three different sheets and you will find out which sheet you need is just looking here on page 43 we are it says pattern sheet e and it's red so i know that's what i'm going to have to trace through so i'm going to draw out all the pieces and i'm starting with a sleeve as an example to you so the underarm sleeve has to be red it is number six so i'm finding it on my big sheet i find my size then i place the pattern tracing paper over the top so that i've got a little bit left all the way around the outside because we still need to add the seam allowance to it then i take the set square and basically i guide the pencil around with the set square all the way it is really really helpful when you can actually see a line rather than drawing dots and then taking your curved ruler and doing it so easy to go wrong here you can actually see what you've drawn and it makes it easier so always go for the easy option and don't forget to also add in the hem I had actually forgotten that and I needed to go back and do that later on. So don't forget to draw in the dashed hemline. And if you can't find the right, um, you know, line, you can just count. If you know it's four in from the center of your pattern, well, then that's what you do, right? I do that a lot, actually. I count things out all the way down. Excellent. And then the next thing is to do the curves. Curves are always better done by hand or if you have a curved ruler, but actually, 
you don't need it. Don't go out and buy one if you don't have one. And this might be the only time you, you ever use it. So now I'm going to check that I've got all my markings on there that are on the pattern as well. It will tell you that in your instructions. So you can have a look what it is, what it's called. You transfer all of that to your pattern. And in this case, it's the under sleeve. I just call it sleeve B. And we're going to cut that two times in the share fabric. And for the lining, we're also going to cut it two times, but we're going to cut it shorter along the hemline. And then I'm going to also draw a line for the grain line. Great. And now I can give this a tick off. I've done it and I can go on to the next one. And in this case, it's my sleeve. So I'm going to draw around my sleeve. Same applies. And here I'm a bit confused. I don't know which one is the one that goes down. So I'm just quickly counting it out. One, two, three, four. And so I know, well, that's where my pencil has to sit. And then I go down. And if you're not quite sure, you can always lift up up your tracing paper just to check where you need to go because you might not see it all that well but I, I suppose all of you will see it very well it's just me my eyesight isn't the best anymore so it sometimes takes me a bit to to see stuff so this is my sleeve a now and i write my size run it's a size 146 for the german ones or the europeans and it's um, age 10 to 12 for all the english customers don't forget to transfer the markings for the top of the sleeve as well. And that's it. I'll do that with all my other patterns. Now we're going to do the front pieces, just quickly showing you the finished one here. What we want to do is draw everything out exactly as it is there. We're not starting doing the facing, then the front, and then the lining. We're doing it in one. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to trace again our facing and the lining so that we have separate pieces. For the lining, we also always cut off here the dashed line. We don't need that. So that's quite important. It's really easy to get it wrong if you start tracing these all separately yeah we don't want to do that we want to do it in one go and then start tracing from there and then add our seam allowances in so let's get started with that and now we're going to trace through our facing and our lining and you can always check with your October magazine what it is that you are cutting out and you can see here there's a little pencil next to what we need to cut here and that means that you're cutting it out of the main master copy basically and I'm going to do my facing first and again I'm going to let my pencil run alongside my set square which is really easy it's really nice and it makes it so much quicker than um, any other method. And I'm going to go all the way down to the end, including the hem for this one, because it is a facing. Wonderful. And then we're going up. There's a little curve. And you can see that even small curves you can do with a straight ruler if you do it the way I'm doing it here. But then when you have a really pronounced curve, you really do want to do it by hand all the way around. And I think it's so much better to trace it off from something you've already drawn because that way you will know it is exactly the same. It's so easy to get some of these lines wrong when you're going from this sheet, all those different lines in it. It's just not that easy. And I'm marking the center front all the way down. And I'm also marking my grain line. And then the last thing is always to write on it what it is so that you don't get confused later on and say, oh, I don't know what this is. I mean, it's pretty obvious what it is, but just in case you're doing it for the first time, you might want to do that. We need those two times in shell fabric and they need to be mirror image and we will also interface that. But we might interface the entire front actually, as they're suggesting here, that is the shaded part of the pattern um, illustration. And it says 
well, it's shaded. So basically, uh, it would be a good idea to interface the whole front. And then we are going to make the lining slightly shorter. That's going to be drawn across where we have the hem. And then for the curves, I'm going to just do it by hand. Go down. And it's important to always check that you have drawn on the right markings because they will be helpful later. And then you write on what it is. In this case, it's a lining, two times, mirror image, and whoopsie daisies in lining. And there we go. And now we're going to do the same for the back. Again, you've got in your little booklet that little pencil mark next to it, which means that you're cutting from this master pattern and that this master pattern should have all the markings for the lining and the master on it. And there you go, you can see the little pencil here and that means that you have to trace those pieces out from your master plan, so to speak. We've got a left side, we've got a right side. So here is quite important that we get those right. So let's get those traced off. And we're doing the right side, we're leaving off the hem almost did it wrong but not quite and we're going in for that one there we go all the way up mark the points that you can see And go down the side. Everything has this really beautiful curve to it. So I think this will fit absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm very excited about this jacket. I wish I could put it on a boy, but there's no boy to be had. So I'm just going to make a boy jacket and give it to girl. Unless I find a boy in the meantime. <laughs> but I think it's nice for a girl as well. It just should close the other way around then, but I'm just going to do it boy style so nobody gets confused. Okay, so I'm marking this down as well. This is my back and that's the right side and it's lining and we're cutting it once. So I write all this down. It's so easy when you start cutting out and you haven't really familiarized yourself enough with it that you cut the wrong stuff we don't want to do that and then we have the grain line as well and that finishes the first one now we want to cut it out roughly because we need that centimeter seam allowance still which we will be adding to so now we're going to do the other side so flip over your master plan here then take your tracing paper again and go over it now the other way and what I want to say about this tracing paper is um, that I get that from San Francisco. So for Americans, you can get it too. I like this because it's actually a mesh, which means that you can pin it together and use it like a twirl. And you can check it out before you actually cut into your fabric and just see what it kind of will look like. And it's not going to tear, or at least that's what they're saying. And you can draw on it with pencil really well as well. And I think that's great, especially if you plan to fit this. You don't need to do a twirl. You can do that with this thing. So here on the left side, we have got the slit protruding. And again, we need just one in lining. So we mark that and you can also mark your grain line again or leave it off. <laughs> like me, I forgot. And then we're roughly cutting this one out as well. And you can see how these two pieces in the end will fit together. And on the main piece, it comes out, it protrudes, and we cut two of those mirror image, so we don't need this line anymore. And now we just have to draw out all the rest. So that would mean the back yoke and the collars and the collar stand and my pockets. And then I meet you back here. Now that you've traced everything through, your next step is to add the seam allowance to it and 
you will get then a really cool pattern that looks a little bit like this. So let's do that now. Now to get your seam allowances on, you have got on your set square lines for every half a centimeter, so it's dead easy. You place a set square on where there's a centimeter and then you just follow the set square with your pencil. So I'm moving the set square around slightly where I have a curve and it's just so easy to do. The only place you can't do that is of course where you have a curve and you have to put your dots here vertical to the seam so that it's an even seam allowance all the way around. I do that all the way up and then we can draw it in really nicely as well and that's it basically. I hope that you are not frightened off by this but you're thinking wow I can do this with Marina's help I get it done. <laughs> so basically seam allowances are drawn all the way around every single pattern piece that you have except in those places where there is a fold line. So for October that would be those little dashed lines on the side that means there's a fold there so that's not where you want to do it okay. And then when I'm done with this and also do it along the hem and if you want to be notified of my next video to tick that little bell for the channel so that you don't miss out but the next one where we're going to prep everything up make some pattern alteration and get it all cut out is in, going to be in four weeks. And now I just have to do all the rest of them. And that's almost it. We have prepared all our pieces. I've actually pressed them as well. I think that's quite an important one. You would want to press it. And the sleeve first. We have got an under sleeve and um, an upper sleeve. And I've called them A and B. Yeah, they are going to be sewn together along here and you can see that we've got a little curb in here and that makes the sleeve just sit nicer so uh, October really has thought about the fit here we've also got a few um, notches here which I would put in which make it a little bit easier to put it together we know that we will have to hold in ease in the fabric in the top here to fit around the shoulder and you also want to make sure you've got your markings here for the straight grain. I would always write on it how much you have to cut out and what you cut out so that you don't get that wrong. And then we've got the sleeve. And I'm glad you're seeing this here. I've actually made not an error. I omitted something. So I'm just going to go back on and you can watch me do that. Um, nobody's perfect. <laughs> okay so with my sleeve if I just put this back on here what was missing was my hemline because when we cut this in the lining we don't need that hemline let me just go in here and put it on the four, what, 46 there we go perfect so it sits right on there what I didn't mark was the hem and that's one thing that um, if you're not sure which one of the dashed lines it is, I would just count up. So my 146 is 1, 2, 3, 4, the fifth line. So I go up on the dashed lines five times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I know that this here, I'll just do this with a ruler really. There we are. And... The same will go on here, but since they're going to be the same, of course, what I'm going to do is just trace through where that needs to be. Oh, so I'm just going to mark that and that's perfect. Right. See, not always so perfect, the marina. I already love this jacket. I think we're going to have a lot of fun making this. So let's go again here. So now I've got that um, drawn in here and that means that when I'm going to do my lining it's another thing that I didn't do now I'm just I'm just gonna draw this across as well because of course you have the seam allowance on it there's a lot that can go wrong if you don't 
have any experience with this sewing, right? But I'm going to keep to just having the one pattern for the lining and for my um, upper material. So when I'm going to cut the lining, all I'm going to do is here, as you can see, that would be the line for uh, without the seam allowance, that's it. For With the seam allowance, all I do is then fold it up and cut it there. So the lining has to be shorter, right? That's all I do. So that's my sleeve. Then we have got the back. Now the back is really cool because it's got a slit. And the one thing I want to say for this is do not be scared of these slits, seriously. Um, me at the moment I have no clue how I'm going to show you how to do that right I haven't made one in years and the beautiful thing is with sewing that really if you adhere to the instructions and you adhere to like some some general um, logic it's like maths really um, it'll be easy we have got a lining back right and a lining back left okay so what will happen here is this is magic this will wrap over here okay can you already see how these lines now fit on top of each other so this will actually be sewn well obviously to the outer material but and that will then sit on the other side but that's how the slit will go together and from the inside this is what you're gonna see right you're gonna see this beautiful satin along here and that's it and i've already cut the lining shorter here i've already done that um so correct so make sure that you don't have the hem on there we don't need it so that's all done so it fits perfect the back uh, actual piece which we cut in the shell fabric you cut to the same mirror image this will sit up and then turn down and give you a really nice hem so it's not tight it'll sit absolutely perfect no problem i will show you how this works so that's that we'll do it step by step together and i'm really excited i get to do stuff like this because actually i trained as a tailoress so um, this is very much like something that i love doing so the other thing that we've got on here is the shoulder yoke you can see the shoulder yoke here and that is cut on the fold so i've put my fold line on there and we cut that in lining and in shell fabric and that will be the back and then everything is going to be lovely and top stitched so what i would recommend you do is get yourself some nice top stitching thread for this because that's going to make all the difference it's going to look fantastic and then we've got the front so once you look at the pieces you think it's actually it's pretty straightforward we've got the lining here and we've got the facing so these will be sewn together and then that will fit perfectly on here it's really simple right no big deal so that those are the front pieces and then we've got a collar and an under collar and an upper collar now the upper collar is always a little bit bigger than the under collar so that the collar will roll to the outside and again they're both on the fold you need both of them in the shell fabric and then we've got the collar stand and again that's also shell fabric and you want to make sure that you put interfacing on one of these but we'll do that in the next video where i'm going to show you what i'm cutting out for the pocket you've got the inner and the outer pocket i've got two pockets here um scrumple this up and put it in the bin so i had to unscrumple it and then we've got the pocket weld so we're going to do a lovely weld pocket in here what i like particularly about this magazine is that you have got some really fabulous drawings for a lot of the stuff that's in there like this is for the weld pocket i really love how that's drawn out it's very very nice and of course you can see everything very clearly almost better than with a photograph i would say i think that's really lovely so don't be frightened we shall do that together is absolutely no problem 
those are all the pieces so what you need for the next time is you need your fabric and I just want to very quickly say that um, I have got a really fantastic wool for mine. I'm going to do it in a dark blue and I'm going to find some other fabrics to go with it. And I haven't quite done that yet. But you need to have a wool fabric. And the nice thing about, of course, these pattern books, they're quite um, detailed. It will tell you exactly what you need. And again, you find that on page 43. It's a meter and a half in lining and it's a meter and a half basically in wool. Yeah, and we need also um, Fusible, they suggest Violin or H180. If you want to regain a little bit of stretch for your Violin, you want a Fusible knit Violin, which is kind of um, stretchy as well, so that the coat will fall really nicely. So what you don't want to do is go and get just any kind of Violin to put or interfacing. To put on here and that's it and i'll see you next time ready with the fabrics and i hope you will really enjoy this and um yeah let's sew some october see you next time